We've officially entered the no man's land of time between Christmas and New Year's, and it's neither fish nor fowl. Sort of like me. I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus. Some Jews think I'm too Christian to be Jewish, while some Christians think that I'm too Jewish for the church. Did you ever feel like there was no room at the inn and the manger is getting a little crowded too? Well, in a few days, the manger goes back into storage and the lights get taken down. It's time for folks to take a deep breath between the celebrations and await the inevitable bills that haunt the end of January, like the supercharger credit card ghost of Christmas past. One holiday is still in our rearview mirror, while the next is approaching faster than a bargain hunter, hitting the clearance tables after long lines of Christmas returns. Well, I think it calls for a little reflection. So allow me to introduce myself and welcome you formally to Crosstalk. My name is Randy Weiss, and like I said, I'm a Jewish guy that believes in Jesus. With all of the hectic holiday activities, I hope that Jesus didn't get lost in your shuffle. Let me remind you that Jesus is Lord, and he was such a nice Jewish boy. We just celebrated his birth. It was marked on everyone's calendar, but his return will not be found in your date book. Man's measure of time shifted from B.C. to A.D. on the hinge of his birth in Bethlehem. But I got to ask you, is it remembered annually but forgotten daily? Do you celebrate a babe in a manger or the man on a cross? This is a great time to ponder a few sincere questions as we cross this time bridge between the festivals. Once again, our calendars are about to turn from an old year to a new year, but before that clock strikes 12 and everyone cheers, are you really prepared for this new year? If the holiday rush is stealing your peace, take a deep breath and relax with me as we remember a forgotten Christmas father and a special prayer vigil of Jesus. Perhaps this eclectic mix of insight, challenge, and a reading from the Bible will help us transition from holiday memories to hope for tomorrow. However, awkward as this might be, will you permit me to begin with a confession? Do you ever find yourself getting distracted while reading the Bible? I ask because recently it happened to me, and it probably happens more than I care to admit in a public forum. Now, preachers aren't supposed to be distracted when reading the Bible, but who are we kidding? It happens. The question is, why? I guess it can be hard to remain engulfed in a text birthed in a world from which we're thousands of years removed. The literature was written in ancient languages that lose a little luster or clarity in the translations. With the passing of so many centuries, the context sometimes seems, well, it's foreign. Ancient Judaism lived alongside neighboring cultures that are long ago extinct. Yet these societies and their residents fill the pages of the Bible. It is their stories that we read, yet their stories often seem distant without a tour guide to bring the story to life when the Holy Spirit seems distant. Now, these are not excuses. They're more like le legitimate hurdles to overcome, and that is why every good Bible teacher has the responsibility to carry his listeners from the modern world back into antiquity. We need to help each reader crank up a time machine and return to that ancient world.